For a long time, I wasn't sure how to do this video and decided to try something different. It seems a bit more professional, and it's how I would do this if it were a work project. Thinking about it, I don't ever remember giving this project a name. It's always my encrypted voice project or crypto transceiver software, but those aren't really names. I'm thinking open crypto voice module or perhaps open CVM work, but I'm an engineer, so I've never been very good at naming things. Anyways, the past few weeks have seen a lot of activity. The 0.8.0 release from a few weeks ago is the first update to the project in a couple years. And the most recent 0.9.0 release from a few days ago, which was born from frustrations getting the last release to work, culminated in a software redesign. This release actually makes the system feel like a product, which is perhaps why I've started thinking about naming it. But the outcome of all that work was a list of new features and improvements in addition to that redesign, which I'll spend a few minutes talking about. With all these new features, it's become necessary for users to be able to adjust them. Saving settings to the SD card seems the natural place. This can be useful for changing transmission mode, enabling push-to-talk, etc. The settings are copied to memory at startup, so you can still use the system with the SD card removed. In the future, I may make some sort of UI for creating these customizations, but for now, hand editing is required. The crypto.ini file in the project GitHub repository is far fairly well documented to aid with this. I don't do HF radio, but I have had requests to implement encryption on the HF single sideband modes supported by Codec 2. In retrospect, now that it's done, it's an obvious next step for the platform, as it enables even longer distance secure communication over radio, which was always the primary goal of the project. Commercial options for this exist, but are expensive, and I'm not aware of any other open platform that does this. And here I'll give my standard disclaimer that obscuring communication over amateur or other personal radio services like CB is illegal. I'm assuming if you're using this, you're licensed to do so. The software redesign allowed latency to be reduced on the narrowband FM mode, as can be seen here. Latency is reduced by almost a third. However, the differences in the HF single sideband modes aren't significant because those are mostly due to the modulation and encoding schemes used by those modes. Originally, I didn't think push-to-talk was a very useful feature because you could always just tie a microphone push-to-talk signal to the radio. But some of the HF modes consume significant amounts of CPU even when idle, so the addition of push-to-talk can be helpful in battery-powered applications. There are various configuration settings you can adjust to make the feature work with your particular microphone and radio. This was another issue which arose when implementing the HF single sideband modes. Some of them consume significant CPU when there is no signal coming in from the radio. So a modem squelch feature was added, which will turn off signal demodulation if the radio signal drops below a certain threshold. Use this in combination with your radio squelch feature to reduce power usage when the radio is idle. And as we see here, the differences in CPU usage when both push-to-talk and modem squelch are used. 700C in particular consumes an entire CPU core trying to find a signal. The 700D and E modes aren't as bad, but do take up some CPU. The 2400B mode consumes very little, so these features don't help very much there. Power consumption will vary somewhat based on which USB audio devices you use, but this should be typical. Note that this is with HDMI disconnected and nothing connected to the USB ports other than the US two USB audio devices, as this is the most representative battery-powered configuration. The full duplex 100% duty cycle data was captured in the 700E mode, which seems to use a bit more power than the 2400B mode. Power usage for the 700D mode is similar. My last note is on the Pi Zero. I've never found it to work well, and it seems like all the comments I get about it are it not working right. It seems more trouble than it's worth trying to maintain. Has anyone actually successfully used it? If I'm going to support other boards, I'd like them to be useful. The Pi shortages have forced me to consider supporting other boards from other vendors. There are a few contenders while, which on paper seem like they'd be comparable to, comparable to a Pi 3, but I don't have unlimited time or budget to support all the boards I could. To that end, I accept patches or boards. <laughs>